Hello and welcome. In our video series on the Heliocentris Hybrid Energy Lab, we are now taking a closer look at the battery modeling. The didactic approach for advanced training and applied research seamlessly integrates the three essential steps of knowledge gaining, providing a turnkey solution. The first step is the observation and measurement of component and system responses. Second, we are using the model and curve fitting to derive a quantitative description. Finally, the quantitative description and its predictions is applied in real-life use cases. In the center of this approach, there is a mathematical model usually derived semi-empirically from fundamental effects like kinetics or transport phenomena. The correct model parameters to describe the measured data are derived by the method of curve fitting. Our tailored tools reduce the barrier of applying this advanced technique in training and applied research. The battery model is used for calculation of the state of charge, as well as the battery characteristic curve for real-time visualization of the operating point. In advanced applications, the SOC can be used as a reference variable for control algorithms, or the parameterized model can be used for battery simulation. The mathematical model is derived from observations. For example, the difference between the battery voltage and the open circuit voltage is proportional to the battery current. The proportionality constant is the static internal resistance and is added as an ohmic term to the model equation for the battery voltage. On the other hand, the battery voltage drops when the capacity expires. This translates into a term with a pole when the integrated current reaches the capacity Q. The voltage peak at full charge adds another term which is a function of the integrated current. Finally, a low-pass filtered component models the inertance of the battery voltage to quick load changes. Details on the model can be found in the publications of Tremblay et al. or the MATLAB library. To interactively experience the model, we use the battery model module from the theory menu. It evaluates the model for given parameter sets and different predefined scenarios, like constant current discharge and charge, deep and fast cycles, and load ramps. The scenario, in this case the ramp, is reflected by the current as a function of time, depicted in the central chart in light red. The area reflects the integrated current, or charge. In red we have the state of charge, and in blue the modeled voltage. In the chart below the different components of the equation are shown with their individual contribution, again as a function of time. When increasing the static resistance, the current ramp leads to a steeper ohmic polarization ramp in blue. The chart on the right depicts the voltage calculated for a complete charge and discharge branch at the rated current, in this case C10. This type of chart is also used for operational point visualization in the battery view. The spread of the branches increases with a higher resistance. This hysteresis-like characteristic is a good illustration of the cycle losses of a battery. The dynamic response of the battery can be studied with fast cycles. The low-pass filter constant tau has a direct effect on the transient battery voltage and the corresponding polarization in red. However, there is no effect on the static cycle. Parameter A determines the height of the peak at full charge. And parameter B its width. We have noticed that different scenarios are sensitive to different parameters. Experiments to characterize real batteries 
should be designed accordingly. This brings us to the battery model fitting, accessible from the theory menu. As an example, we load measurement data of a fast cycle experiment. In the chart, the measured battery current, reflecting the scenario, is shown in light red, the measured voltage as blue dots. The black line reflects the model, evaluated for the start parameters, consisting of the battery parameters and the initial SOC. The area of interest can be selected by the cursors. Let's recall that the dynamic behavior is governed by the low-pass filtered component. From the equation we can identify the relevant parameters, k1 and tau. We can manually fit the model to the data by adjusting the start parameters and observe the result as the black line is updated. By use of an optimum finder, the fitting can be automized. The selected parameters are varied in the defined range to minimize the residual. After invoking the automatic fit, the fit result is added to the chart, the model voltage in light blue, the state of charge in orange, the optimal parameters and the residual are indicated as well. When fitting a higher number of parameters simultaneously, it is likely that the optimizer will end up in a side minimum. This can be avoided by reducing the amount of free parameters, choosing appropriate start values and restricting their range. Iterative fitting is supported by the copy button, copying the selected free parameters from fit to start. In our case we are fine with the fit result. It can now readily be applied to the battery settings. In the setting dialog, the new parameters appear on the left, from where they can be copied to the target configuration. Let's use the first custom configuration. By activating the configuration, the model parameters will be further on used for SOC calculation and visualization. Taking a close look, the operating point is not on the static discharge branch of the model calculation for the actual current. The small open cycle indicates the transient model voltage. Assuming our parameter set provides a good representation of the actual battery, the currently assumed state of charge must be incorrect. A higher SOC would be expected at the measured voltage and current. In this case, the outer SOC function comes into play. In case of a deviation, the SOC is recalibrated to map the modeled to the measured voltage. Once calibrated, the auto SOC can be deactivated again. The SOC is further on determined by integrating the current with respect to the capacity. The SOC will be smooth over time, but the voltages might deviate again depending on the accuracy of the model. On the other hand, keeping the auto SOC activated would keep deviations minimal but may lead to jumps of the SOC at each recalibration. The SOC is also available via the application programming interface. Heliocentris provides an example application, including source code, that implements an energy management algorithm for SOC-based battery cycling. As you can see from the state chart, the generator is switched on if the SOC falls below a defined threshold and is switched off again if the SOC is recovered to a second threshold. This concludes our video on battery modeling with the Heliocentris Hybrid Energy Lab. I hope you got an idea how the didactic approach of seamless integration of measurement 
modeling and application can excel your advanced training and applied research projects. Thank you for watching and goodbye.